The Resurrection of the Dead in Judaism. The Rambam, I think this is how you say it, Mammonites, compiled what he refers to as the Shlusha Asar Akim, the 13 fundamental principles of the Jewish faith, as derived from the Torah. Rambam refers to these 13 principles of faith as the fundamental truths of our religion and its very foundations. Number 13 of the 13 fundamental principles is the belief in the resurrection of the dead, which is a, a real, you know, even from the Christian standpoint, you know, Jesus rose from the dead and uh, uh, Jesus um, uh, his friend, his his good friend Lazarus, he'd been dead four days. Uh, he raised him from the dead, which led to the shortest verse in the New Testament in the Gospels. Uh, Jesus wept. That's all. One verse. Jesus wept, and he did after raising Lazarus because people still didn't believe who he was. I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Ezekiel 1 and 10 are together a vision, again, I'm reading from the book God dictated to me, Isaiah 53, and the day of the Lord. And as you can see, this doesn't really have much to do, if anything, with Isaiah 53 and the day of the Lord. There's a lot of other information in there that he taught me and had me write. Keith, go to your computer. Keith, do this. Write this down, or type this. He'd always say right. Ezekiel 1 and 10 are together a vision of the resurrection of the spirits of the dead to heaven. The creatures later identified as cherubs, which is a type of angel there on the ark, uh, with the spirit are going to and fro, east, west, north, and south, adding eyes to themselves and to the wheels, and taking them to the platform of heaven at the entrance of the eastern gate of the house of the Lord, with the presence of the God of Israel above them. All of Israel, whose name will endure in the heaven God is creating, that are righteous and in right standing with God, are the eyes of the are the eyes on the cherubs and in the wheels. The eyes represent the eyes of the spirits of the dead, a spiritual heaven. Now back in antiquity and even into the Middle Ages, that wasn't a, 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 a great thought, so to speak, because everybody feared the God. I mean, they, they, they felt like everything that bad that happened to, to anybody it was because God was angry. It's just anger. Angry. And they had no knowledge of science or medicine. And yet they, they missed their, their loved ones so much. And so they'd go out to the cemetery or they'd go out to the grave plot and just look at it and they would wish that that loved one would just rise up out of the dirt and be them again. Not in spirit. I mean, that's just what it was. I mean, it was an age of ignorance of the highest order. People couldn't read. There were no schools to speak of. Um, they were like, uh, everybody acted on emotion. And, you know, and your basic personality from your soul, you know, like a, a mean old soul, this and that. And uh, not a lot of reasoning capabilities. Uh, you, you gain a lot of ability to reason uh, by going to school, even though you're learning stuff you'll never use, it helps your reasoning capabilities. And, you know, that's when everything changes. You, you have to read, you have to read the Bible for two different uh, eras. There, there's uh, antiquity in the Middle Ages, and then we had the age of reasoning. 
age of medicine. This is all called the common uh, era. Uh, we science, literature, everything. All these different changes, which leads to, uh, of course, the age of information and, and now the Internet. And it's written into there. I'm about to show you one of them right here. So I don't know how this was interpreted by Rambam, but he's talking about the resurrection of the dead uh, based on Ezekiel 37. Rise, old bones, rise. Okay? But this got missed. And that's why there might be fundamental principles, but as you're going to see as I go on, and God again dictated this to me, some things that, that are part of your religion that come from antiquity and the Middle Ages have to be reassessed. Judaism is supposed to be a very rational, logical, intellectual religion. But boy, a few things got dropped along the way, and my pointing them out my pointing them out is a proof of who I am. I am God's righteous servant. And I handle, I handle everything that his other three righteous servants, Moses, righteous and a servant. David, righteous and a servant. Elijah, righteous and a servant. And yet we only have a description of one man for this day. The righteous servant of God. So, effectively, I am, I am the righteous servant of God, his servant David, a shepherd, again, Ram Bam, two chapters on King Moshe, and he's just making it up, just making it up as he goes, just like he did the Messianic era, can't back any of it up, a shepherd, uh, Elijah and the prophet like Moses, and this is the prophet like Moses, Moses did two things, he led the Exodus, and he wrote the Torah. God dictated it to him. Okay, well, the Jews aren't in bondage. I don't need to do that as a prophet like Moses. So what's left? Write this down. That's the prophet like Moses. And I have all the knowledge that Elijah would have. Elijah. What's so special? The only man in the Hebrew Bible to be specifically taken to heaven. And then he returns in the day of the Lord. Clearly, it's not going to be that Elijah. There's nothing about heaven that I need to know to answer questions that I don't know. I've been taught it. And I envision lots of visions early in, in, my, in my 13 years, first seven years. Not so much uh, lately except for pictures that they put into my mind when we were talking. God likes you to see what he's talking about. Uh, so I'm a, you know, you don't have to go into a trance or anything for those. I just send pictures into my mind. It's a wonderful thing. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyway, okay, that's, that's some backdrop. Let, let's, let's carry on here. Okay, there's the eyes. Okay, a spiritual heaven. That's what I left off. And this is uh, Isaiah 65, verse 17 to 18. For behold, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered. And I know why that is. And how it occurs. They shall never come to mind. Be glad then and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I shall create Jerusalem as a joy and her people as a delight. And this is Isaiah 66 verse 22. For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall endure by my will, declares the Lord, so shall your seed and your name endure. Spiritual heaven. God, what's this all about? What are you doing? I'm going to make a new earth and a new heaven. The new heaven is the spirits of the Jewish people. With the name Israel endures. Considered angels. The angels Israel. 
is how he refers to it. That's what makes it a new heaven. A new host of angels. So, um, in the new earth, the same story again. You get to watch it. You get to watch it, Jewish people. You don't want to miss heaven. Now, I've been there. Generally, I, I can still sense my body. But I've been there in pure spirit. And uh, But he tells me, you'll, be, you'll feel your, your body, your physical form. But uh, he's going to have another chosen. He's going to basically just run the story again. And you get to see how it really all played out from the get-go. And, of course, time means nothing to you. You don't want to miss it. And that's my proof of an Elijah. I just showed you the prophet like Moses. There's my Elijah. Can't really show you a David ex except for I bring the reckoning and the dismissal of the rabbis, uh, which is on plenty of videos. God has, I am the reckoning and I am the wrath on Christianity. And how you fit the Messianic era into the wrath on Christianity, how you can say Moshiach perfects the world and yet he's got to bring the wrath of God to the Christians and the Gentiles in general. I don't know how you put it together. I mean, you cherry pick. Let's take the stuff that we really like and the stuff that sounds kind of ominous, like uh, utter destruction or I will hurl your glory to the ground if Elijah doesn't get done what I want him to do, clear the way, which, by the way, is building the third temple. That's what i got to get done, in case you want to know. But i got to be recognized. People got to read all this and go, well, we got to go with this. Because he couldn't possibly know this. That's an atheist for 50 years, as if that matters. I mean, the greatest rabbis, Ram Bam, this, that, people today, Jews for Judaism, Toby is saying, saying 53 is, um, is um, the people Israel as one, all Jewish people as one man. None of it makes any sense. Uh, <laughs> Toby bases it on the Holocaust, that there was a guilt offering. Let's go to Leviticus. He went Christian. He just, <laughs> he's going to use the animal, sacrificial, and worship laws for a human being. And that's adding to Leviticus. You're not supposed to add to or take from anything God had written. The Christians killed one son. Toby Singer's got him killing six million to, so that they would go back home. Yeah, that's not God. He knew he'd come back. He knew he'd get driven back. He didn't have to lift a finger. <laughs> and then it, 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 Michael Skoback and whoever wrote their commentary, it's another person, but I only hear Skoback talking about it. It's based on the Messianic era, where the world realizes the Jew has been right all along, a great exaltation, this and that, never going to happen. His whole commentary is based on something never going to happen. You know, where's the day of the Lord? Where's utter destruction? Where's vengeance? Yeah, and where's God's representation? Where's his Moses? God's coming, but, you know, clearly it's Moshe, but you better get a description. I mean, you got a description, and I still can't get anybody to talk to me. Does shun, despise, and held no account ring a bell? Because God knew it was going to be like this in the beginning. Ezekiel 37 gives a vivid account of raising the dead to life into new bodies of flesh and bone. This was a common belief in the ancient age and middle ages. In this age of information with knowledge of Science and the human body, few people believe that a human body can or will be resurrected anew by God. You cannot take, we know, but you cannot take the ashes the, of bones and <laughs> make a new human body. You know, you're just making stuff up. When did God do that? You, you ask, can God do that? You know what the answer is? No, he can't. He said, now I to create a human being where there could be a resurrection of the dead. He said, but I don't want anything to do with that. But the world as created is not set up for that type of an event. Believe it or not, God doesn't have a magic wand. But he's got the unseen and elements in it we don't understand and the power 
which, and of course, I'm still familiar with it. It, it actually surrounds me. It's, it is Ezekiel. Uh, they, they call it in Ezekiel the cords of his power. To me, it just completely surrounds every every inch of my body and my head. It just surrounds me. I mean, he can move my hands wherever he wants and turn me around, twist me like a top if he wants, slam me to the ground, I've like mentioned. Um, yeah, if you hadn't guessed it, I'm, I'm experiencing this. I'm not like any other human being on this planet. But uh, but I'm still Keith. I'm still Keith. I'm a friendly person. Quick to anger, but very friendly. Uh, and I've been through every stage of walk of life, man, from poverty, which he took me to. He's taken me to. I have nothing, but uh, which is kind of a religious thing, I think. You, you know, uh, even Jesus hated material things, told the rich man he can't get to heaven, and things like that. That's just part of it. And it does, it, you know, another thing that this uh, fire refinement, all these punishment words and maltreatment, uh, makes you humble. Uh, more so to him. You know, Moses starts out this firebrand that killed a man, uh, that made him angry. And at the end of his life, it is said Moses was the most humble man on earth. Now, I don't know how you measure something like that, but I can tell you I'm more humble to God than anyone on earth because I literally fear him because I know the kind of pain he can put me through. And most people don't really have that knowledge. You know, I fear God. But <laughs> when he'll slam your face down into the cement <laughs> or to the floor in your room, and so many other things. I, I know people really don't want to hear all that, but it's important to understand 53. Let me carry on with this uh, resurrection of the dead. Today, few people believe that. It's a primitive and medieval concept that was good for a time through the Middle Ages. That is why God provided visions of heaven conforming to the beliefs and world of the Jewish people in the Middle Ages and before in a spiritual heaven for a more enlightened time of reasoning and knowledge. Do you understand what I just said? The Bible has to be read with an understanding of antiquity in the Middle Ages and those people and who they were. And it's also written for people of this day, modern age, knowledge, information, science, medicine, reasoning. You, you can't just say, our sages say, <laughs> well, do you agree with it? That's the next question. You're not going to agree with the 13th principle when I get done. The burden on Israel and the practicalities of such an event of millions of people suddenly appearing in the land from the time of Abraham to today is unimaginable. You got six million from the Holocaust alone. Uh, many would be illiterate and savage, and few would be trained to work in this society. This would include the Israelites for 400 years as slaves in Egypt. What are you going to do with those people? Run. God says, run. This is what you're going to do. This is scare you to death. <laughs> All would have to be housed and fed and educated. Uh, illiterate and savage, uh, it'd be a prophecy that destroys the government of the state of Israel. I don't even know if you could fit them all in. From the Israelites in Egypt to the Holocaust, since the Holocaust. Where, I, it's, well, I know it's millions. I just wonder if you get start hitting a billion. I don't know. It's a ridiculous concept. And, and when I sit there and I watch and I listen, and I hear rabbis do this, I understand why God dismissed them. Basically, you're going to have to get all this straight if you want to re remove yourself from dismissal, rabbis, and enter the scroll of remembrance of Malachi 3, which is what takes you to heaven. If you want to remove that, you better go read these books. It's just two of them. Uh, one of them is my life, the life of God's righteous servant by Isaiah 53, and that's to show how I fit the verses. That's what it's all about. And then that's the first seven chapters. There's 14 or 15, and then God speaks to me. And from that point, it's all about him and me. It's pretty interesting. It's a pretty interesting time. <laughs>
and, and it continues and and I guess at the end of my life or at some point we're going to do it again for, for the finale until he decides that it's time for me to die which is that's how I'm going to die he's just going to make the decision like he did with Elijah um, <laughs> nothing, nothing okay the resurrection of the dead in a human body to a heavenly earth, the world to come. No, no, that's messianic. There's also a world to come, which is really amazing to read. It, it, because it's not in the Hebrew Bible. And look, this ain't normal tradition stuff. This is somebody who wants to please his, his following and get money, if you ask me and God. That's what this is. He's just making it up. It's not an oral tradition. Now, I don't get into the Torah at all. In the oral tradition, I'm going to read it God the way God says it in just a second, but um, we don't get into that at all. I, I, I know Rambin said Moshiach would uh, uh, read Torah day and night. Well, uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. But I definitely am a scholar on the prophets and the day of the, the Lord and uh, everything I've been talking about, about uh, 45 videos that we keep Flipping, uh, find, you a, find you a motorcycle and just stick with it the last two or three because, you know, you can go back four or five and we're just redoing them to keep them circulating and adding and adding. Like, this is brand new. Uh, I may have touched on this before, but uh, we, we're adding, throwing a couple new ones in here and there and... Uh, Eventually, I may end up being a vlogger, I think they call it. Jeez, this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to go ride on a motorcycle. Um, I, <laughs> God's promised me. He's had me in poverty for 13 years. and uh, But he told me uh, one day he, we'll, we'll get a motorcycle again. Because uh, I've had one before, a Harley. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, the resurrection of the dead, okay, that's not the world to come. i got to change that. And you say, wait a minute, God dictated that. Why you got to change it? That's to tell you I still had to live the human experience. To truly still feel like I'm Keith, i got to do something dumb like that sometimes. i still got to forget things. Yeah, i got to live the human experience. And, of course, my, answer, my response is, why? <laughs> Don't want to live the human experience. God says, I decide all things, thank you. So anyway, we have a good relationship. He's got a great humor and a personality far different than you get from um, the Hebrew Bible. Uh, be because it was meant for, you know, first and foremost, antiquity. You're supposed to be angry. You're supposed to be, that's it. Putting a plague on all y'all because David failed and, uh, a test of mine. He took a census. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but he's really uh, a joy to be around. He doesn't like to talk that much, but his the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, he does. And uh, sometimes he'll talk, and it sounds like it's a guy. But, but then I can tell it's not. Uh, totally different voices. Totally different. He's, he's got a voice of a five-year-old. I sometimes tell him, it sounds more like a cartoon than me. But, uh, and God just sounds like a very mature man. He doesn't really talk to me that much except when he's tormenting me and torturing me. Oh, that's what I asked him. I said, I see all these words, wounded, chastised, bruised, crushed, maltreated. I said, where's, where's torture and torment? <laughs> he said, that didn't really fit. <laughs> that's what it is, by the way. Okay, the resurrection of the dead, the human body, to a heavenly earth is also said to be a sign that Moshiach has arrived. Or that it will happen in his lifetime. This is a teaching from the ancient age and middle ages that continues today. Most of you eggs here it's not happening. Okay? It's not going to happen. <laughs> Judaism's reliance on everything that the sages say in an era gone by in the oral tradition, it is important for the laws of the Torah. But the Talmud's stories, opinions, and commentaries outside of that have to be viewed in light of this age of reasoning and knowledge. The day of the Lord and the arrival of God's servant David, 
I see him causing David a shepherd. According to the prophets, must be interpreted with the evolution of humanity from the ancient age to the age of information in mind. The eras in between and in the eras to come. Uh, I'm not sure what that one means. By the way, he doesn't always explain everything to me. I'm not on the executive committee. I don't make decisions. I don't decide when I go to sleep. I don't decide what I eat. I don't decide what I get to watch on TV. I don't get to decide when we do this. <laughs> it's 3.30 in the morning. And he just said, uh, just out of nowhere, um, you know what? <laughs> Let's do another YouTube video. I've been having a computer problem, and, and suddenly, suddenly, the problems with my computer that I've been suffering through for two to three days, brand new computer. I got with my stimulus check. It, 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 God says, uh, go, go, go to the Microsoft support. He still won't just tell me, but I found the answer. And uh, basically, it was hold the power button down for 20 seconds. He had let me suffer angst, unhappiness, <laughs> sadness. What am I going to do? I throw this away? How am I, I, I know I got a warranty, but I don't even know where these people are. I got it over the internet. Oh, and I, see, he'll let me do that. He says, and the reason is, the day is coming. The day is coming. When I'm not, let, you're not going to feel those things anymore. You know, once I get recognized, once I'm the Moshe, once I'm the God's righteous servant, Moshe, David, Elijah, prophet like Moses, being recognized and we're bringing the vengeance and hopefully helping the rabbis remove the dismissal uh, so that they can enjoy that fine heaven. Because there's two covenants here, and one of them's the covenant from Jeremiah 31, where God says, "I forgive your sins, remember them no more." They become a holy seed to build the third temple, just as he did for the Assyrian Babylon exiles. He forgave them. He said, it's not because you deserve it, it's for my name. But uh, what did they do? They built the second temple. That's what they, It's not really said specifically, but that's what happened. And um, forgiven again in the day of the Lord. And that's, you know, in Jeremiah 31, see a time is coming, see a time is coming, see a time is coming. It was the the time is the day of the Lord, and it's here. Um, I got too much other information on that, but okay. Well, thank you to, uh, for listening to all that, and for the rabbis. I think you should consider uh, this fundamental principle that you got from Moran Band. I mean, I don't see you know, a, a fundamental uh, principle of your faith. And say, I was an atheist for fifty years. I'm not a religious person. I understand the concept. Well, this is what we believe, because that's what you get from the Christians. You can go to them and say, uh, 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 look at this and that, that and this, this and that. None of that makes sense. None of that makes sense. And this is what you get. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Logic doesn't matter. Well, for the Jews and Judaism and for the God of Israel, it's going to start mattering if the rabbis won't see heaven. Thanks a bunch.